high land, sea, and air, there is no day when men and women do not come, go and pass each other on their journey. To leave one's own land and go elsewhere, to live in the land of others and among them, to earn a living, is a human dimension that, for ages, has questioned the existence of borders between men, people, and nations. In West Africa, there is a country that is three times the size of France. In some places, it is sandy immensity, heated and warmed up all day long by the sun. It is the country of men who on camel's back defy distances and heat to get on the heart of cities. Great oasis in the Sahara Desert we are in Niamey, capital city of the Republic of Niger. Seen through its borders with Algeria and Libya to the north, Chad to the east, Nigeria and Benin to the south, Burkina Faso and Mali to the west, the Republic of Niger is a large emigration and transit area in both the south and the north of Sahara. But apart from the multiplicity of its borders, there are many other situations that make of Niger a land of migration and transit. We are very saddened today to see that the security situation in the sub-region is taking a major blow and that has made Niger a hotbed of stability in a way with regard to the security issue. Therefore, a fertile ground for the movement of migrants. At the time it was Mali, it was shared with Mali, maybe a little Mauritania. But today, all the secure corridors are much more in Niger than in other countries. Among the nationalities that use Niger as a land of immigration and transit, there is also an immediate neighbor, the Republic of Benin. Between Benin and Niger, there is a river that flows. But there is also the mobility of people and trade that takes place daily for decades now. To learn more about the motivations of Beninis, travelers in Niger, Imoru Mama Sumanu, General Secretary of the Niame Section of the group of Beninese people in Niger, has provided a satisfactory reply. Our compatriots come to tell us that life is expensive in Benin and that there is nothing to do. Others come to work, others come to go to Libya, to Algeria. Many pass through here to go to Italy. I took the bus from here to Baraku at 2,500 francs CV. And from there to Agadez, I was taken 25,000 francs CV. It was only at Baraku station that we ate. Once in Dosu, our bus had a breakdown. We had to sleep at the station to leave the next day. It was this obligatory stopover that made us arrive in Agadez only about 11 p.m. We were a total of 60 people, including two women. The other woman was a Ghanaian woman who had one child. The ride was really strenuous. He had nothing to eat and we couldn't wash. There were many problems, but I kept in mind the purpose for which I was traveling. Unfortunately, once at the destination, the reality was quite different. Nothing went as planned. The money I had left when I arrived in Libya was not enough to reach my sister where she was. She then reassured me that I could come and that she should pay my travel expenses upon arrival. Eventually, she fooled me. For many migrants, Niger is only a transit country to reach the El Dorado, located at the other end of the desert. But for many others, it is also a promised land, a land where it is easy to work and earn a living. This is the case of the Beninese children we met on this construction site in the heart of Niamey, the capital city of Niger. I went to school until CMA class. If I no longer go to school, it is because our parents, not having great means, decided to put us in apprenticeship. In this way, 
that we be able to provide for our younger brothers. I used to go to school. It was in primary four that I stopped going. It was of my own volition that I stopped school to start apprenticeship. I have been here since January 2021. I am learning the trade of scrap metal. Before coming here, my mother offered me to learn a trade and I accepted. Only after that did she take me to my boss and it was my boss who brought me here. We start work between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. As soon as the work begins, I put myself in the sand with my predecessors. Then I'm asked to carry the sound measurements needed for the work upstairs. In the evening, we finish at 6 p.m. and sometimes at 7 p.m. Every Saturday, we receive our pocket money for the week. Some receive 4,000 francs and others 5,000 because among us, there are some who work more than others and there are also the sub-buses. It is right here on the construction site that I sleep. When I am hungry, I go to the roadside to buy food before going back to bed. I have a big sister, a little brother, and a little sister. My old sister graduated from high school this year. When I remember them, I am a little saddened. The memories of our games, the good times spent together, come back to me. I also remember our reunion when we came home from school. I miss all of that. In Niamey, as in other Nigerian cities, all you have to do is, is to make a call and the network will provide you with a little Benin is made for a good price. I only call the lady and she brings me the girls. Usually, she brings me her kinship, her big sister's daughter, because I prefer to take someone you know where she comes Generally, I take from 14 years old to 20 years old because the little ones, when you talk to them, they hear and follow you. I take girls, I don't take boys. In general, we deal with them. When things go wrong, this is a child who has been trafficked for more than four or five years. He begins to grow up and he finds himself in front of a situation where he may have been abused or he begins to realize that he is in a dramatic situation. The majority of girls working in the houses are Beninese. It is Mino who work in homes. I remember well that there was a woman who was arrested in relation to trafficking in person or minors. She brings the little girls, makes them work and takes money from her. That's all milking. We were aware of that. We intervened and the perpetrators are currently in prison. We have several people of this ink who are in prison. We continue to sensitize all equals national to make them understand the danger of this situation that threatens us. The majority of young girls and boys who find themselves in this situation have no idea. As I say, there are little girls who are brought here and forced into prostitution. And the majority of people who do that are from Nigeria. These girls come without knowing what they have come to do. The gentlemen and the women who bring the girls force them into prostitution. Gloria Ponou is a clinical psychologist. 
She's presenting the Sonayun Center, one of the actions that are being carried out to help returning migrants regain hope. Here we are at the Sonayun Home. It is a home that has been established since 2014 and welcomes vulnerable children and street children. Several situations put these children into the streets. We have the cases of abuse. We also have migrant children. We have children who have made the return migration that we welcome here. For the most part, they return from Nigeria, Togo, Cameroon, and also Niger. I went to school and teach my class. I could not continue my studies because my father had not established a birth certificate. So I decided to learn a trade. I started my apprenticeship in a workshop that did not suit my mother. And I had to stop until the day when a pastor came to offer me to go and continue my apprenticeship in Nigeria with a relative of his. My mother then asked me if I wanted to go. After some thoughts, I agree. On the day I left for Nigeria, my father didn't even deign to give me 25 francs. As for mother, she had money, but it was only 50 that she gave me. I asked him what I can do with 50 francs. For any answer, my mother wished me good luck. Everyone present laughs at me and said, go learn a trade. A little confused, I left with 50 francs coin in my hand. When I was admitted to the third grade, I had to end my schooling because my parents could no longer afford it. That's how I ended up at the Dantokpa market where I was working as a porter. After a month, those I had befriended to brought drugs. They invited me to smoke, which I did without hesitation. A few days later, a stranger came to offer us to go to Nigeria. Without knowing him, we agreed to follow him. He put five of us in his car. He sold me to a shopkeeper who sold a bit of everything in his shop. When I was in his shop, I was often sleepy around midnight, so he woke me up and forbade me to sleep before 4 a.m. And already at 4 a.m., he woke me up. I was doing dishes on housework. After that, I went to the shop to display the goods. After two and a half months, I realized that for good, I had to leave. To get there, I started stealing Naira notes that I thought had a value of 1,000 francs. When these notes were not worth 1,000 francs, when I managed to put aside what I thought was 15,000 francs CFA, I fled from that shop. I crossed the border with a motorcycle taxi and paid 2000 to return to the top market within a minibus. These are children who for the most part no longer have a compass. They don't have a parent's presence, but also those who have parents here don't even know about their parents anymore. These are children who saw their parents two, three, four, or even five years ago, and who no longer even have the will to see their parents again. The spoken that we listen to ourselves from these children is sexual abuse, rape, touching, harassment, despite the fact that there are boys, contrary to what you may think. Malgré que ce soit des garçons, contrairement à ce qu'on peut pas. And the veil of sadness and sometimes the one of death 
covers the brother who left in search of happiness, empty-handed and with a livid look in their eyes. Some of the survivors of the migrant odyssey returned to the land where they were born, but which, unfortunately, still does not have enough strength to hold them back. What saddens me and makes me cry is all the pain I have felt, the suffering and the after effects that I keep in me until now. If I can give any advice to those who want to go on an adventure outside, it is to stay at home. If someone can help you start a business on a small budget, it's better to stay here. There is absolutely nothing better outside. Well, really, I regretted leaving. If I had stayed at home, maybe I wouldn't find an activity that would allow me to be better. I didn't gain anything in my trip. If I had the opportunity to live, to immigrate in a country, I'm not interested in everything that is an Arabic country. Either it is Algeria, Libya, Kuwait, Saudi, Arabia. I will not go because in the front of an Arabic, black represents nothing. They insult you, call you a dog, a slave, every possible name in their language. If someone comes to tell me they want to leave, I'll say no, because there, if you go there, you won't be able to sleep. Where you are and you sleep and eat on time is better than where you don't have the freedom to sleep every time, even when you are working. So, your country is better than anywhere else. It is a reality that shows us a lot of distress, a lot of difficulties a lot of violation and a lot of frustration. We talk a lot about migrants trying to go to Europe and we tend to forget that we also have a lot of migrants here. Migrants who often find themselves in the informal sector. You know that the informal sector is precarious, the violation of rights. These are people who for the most part find themselves in a situation of illegal migrants. So not having met the requirement in this area in our country and who most of the time cross borders on foot and find themselves at home by force of circumstances and looking for work. Let me give you the example of the hotel sector. You go to bars, restaurants, you find the real world of migrants who need to be accompanied to be supported by the state, by social organizations. Before talking to young people, talk to authorities at various levels. Authorities at national level, but also authorities at municipal level. When someone who has lived the hell of Algeria, lived the hell of the desert in Libya, lived slavery, gives testimonies that make you cry, you let them end up saying, I want to leave. It's because they have lost all hope in their own country. But in their own environment, it is that when they return to their locality, to their commune, they found nothing in place to allow them to maintain hope, to get out of it by staying on the spot. And this is unfortunately the observation that we have made, especially in some municipalities such as Jugu and elsewhere. So I would firstly like to address the authorities to say that we need to treat the issue of youth migration differently. It is not just a question of talking about repression, of talking about raising awareness about the tests, about rights and duties. It is about actually offering opportunities. And so it also involves good governance at the national level and good governance at the level of our municipalities.
There is no doubt that the scourge of migration of minor deprives them of their childhood and compromises their future. Human rights defenders, trade union and children's rights associations and children's rights associations unanimously believe that the fight against child migration and child labor should start within the family circle. Il y a des parents aussi, les causes des parents. It is up to parents to train and educate children. This is how children will know how to distinguish the good from the bad. But unfortunately, there are parents who neglect their children. They do not know where the child eats, nor where he sleeps, and in this case, the child can only fall into delinquency. This is where the problem lies. The population must assume its share of responsibility, ensure that children are not taken as an imposition of nature of God. Children, whether ours or not, belong to all of us. We have a duty to ensure that their evolution is healthy. Do not involve them in any process that could harm their health, morality, and especially their schooling. Whatever the conditions in which schooling is to take place, the child must go to school. Even if it is on the floor that the child has to sit to follow the classes, let him go anyway. Whether disabled or healthy, all children have the right to education and we have a moral duty to ensure that children are protected and that they can be in the best living conditions. And even the regular consumer of migrant children's services come forward and show the kindness of their hearts. They confess their good intentions. Please stop sending little girls under 17 or 18 because you do not know in which hand the little ones will end up. They send these girls but they don't know what they are going for. They just need money while girls need maternal love. They have the right to grow up with their mother. There is a certain age a child must be with his mother, especially the little girl must be with her mother. They just have to stop giving the little girls to work. They don't know what they are going for. The sad page of life that even the return back home is difficult to remove. In spite of the inexorable march of time, there are nightmares that the raising days cannot remove. And when the lips open to speak, they release words that burn our hearts and open our eyes to a word so close to us but so unknown to us. The word of travelers from here and elsewhere, known as migrant. Today I will tell all the young people of Jogo not to leave, but they will tell me that it is because I left and didn't succeed that I want to stop them from going too. That is what they will tell me if I advise them to stay. That's okay, but it is what I have seen and lived that I tell you. To all the young people of Jogo, I stay. To all the young people of Jogo, I say stay there. The little you know how to do, do it. And if you can also learn a trade, do it. If young people can listen to my advice, that would be great. But if someone feels they have to go, that's good for them. So, let's stay. Let's stay and fertilize the stones that makes deep cuts in our feet today. At the end of our effort, at the end of our wrung out brains, they will spread at our feet the red carpet of glory and pride, of having modeled with our hands and our sweat the dreams tomorrow paradise. Let's stay and dream. Let's stay and dream. Thank you.